Okay, hello everyone. Um, in the in the program, it's it's it states from we are talk, we are going to talk about regular general blender development onboarding. Um, that was the plan that uh, Ton had, and he pointed appointed me, and I thought, nah, there is already an onboarding uh, so speak uh, on Thursday, so I'm going to do the next step. And that is basically onboarding on the GPU module. Um, my name is uh, Jeroen Bakker. I'm uh, yeah, a, a developer at uh, Blender since 2008. Uh, since 2008 I was a community developer. Did some many small things uh, in the node editor, uh, bigger things in the uh, compositor. And uh, in, in uh, 2018, when uh, we were working on the uh, 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 code quest, so Blender 2.8 uh, development, Ton mentioned, uh, for, uh, talk, uh, talk, talk to me and said, from, ah, we have one project that we don't have any developers for. Can you do that? And I said, from, yeah, what's, what's the... What's the project? Yeah, we don't have a developer for the viewport. We have one for EV, but not for the viewport. So, ah, after fun, eh, I don't know anything about GPU development or modern GPU de development, but I can, but I can learn. Um, so I had some uh, great guys back then, uh, Clemore, Brecht, Sergei, teaching me a bit from how they, uh, how they think about uh, GPU development. And then it starts rolling, and then it, it was more from, okay, um, I'm in the GPU development module, and still there, and I really enjoy it. <coughs> The target, the target audience of this uh, uh, speak can be anything. I'm not going that deep into the details. I'm going to show you a bit how a GPU works, but it's mainly about the uh, structures and the uh, ways how we structure the code uh, inside Blender uh, so uh, you can use GPU. I'm going to start with, okay, if you have Blender and from frame to frame, what's actually happening in high, le in high level uh, things. Then I'm going to talk about the GPU module, which is the, uh, the source code, uh, source Blender GPU the directory in the source code. And then the draw manager, which is source, good, source Blender draw. Uh, uh, folder in the uh, uh, source code. And what I want to do is afterwards, to, uh, like you can't debug a GPU. That's not possible. You can't set a breakpoint in your source code, at least at, at this point, and then uh, step through your, uh, your, your shaders or your, your application and see what's going on. Uh, but I can, I will show you from, okay, how do we do that? And what kind of tools are, 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 are we using? And that can be interesting also from a tri tri triaging perspective or a regular uh, Blender development uh, uh, perspective. Uh, sometimes I get uh, an, 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 an email from, oh yeah, it, it went wrong in the GPU module. Here is the bug report and I have to start over again. But having just more knowledge about from, okay, how does GPU development work or the GPU uh, module, uh, that might improve the quality of the, of the bug reports that we have, and that would be an awesome uh, uh, win for this talk. So what happens between frames? Well, basically, uh, Blender has a main function and a lot of those uh, uh, starting developers will set the breakpoint in the main method of Blender and then start debugging and step into and see thousands of lines of initializing code and that sort of stuff. The Blender main function is not the void main uh, uh, 
per parameters which starts an execu executable. Blender has its own W main, WM main, which is actually the uh, the main loop of Blender. I will show you shortly. Um, the first thing that, that that main loop does is it will uh, grab s some events from your operating system. It does that via an, uh, an abstraction layer, so it can run on any hardware plat uh, platform. And then um, pro uh, processes that event. It can be from, okay, I'm pressing G. Okay, for G, I have to start. For G in the viewport, I have to start the grab of the, or the transform operation. Okay, I'm starting the transform operation. Uh, for the transform op op operation, uh, the, the, the change in the object, uh, yeah, you change the position of the, of the object and then in the operator you also uh, set from, okay, this object has been changed. So basically, you're only working on scene data there. But you're tagging the, st uh, the, the things that are important that have been changed. Uh, then we have a second step, that is the processing of the Windows event. And with the Windows event, we are talking about resizing the window, resizing areas, that kind of uh, uh, things. I'm not going, going to dive into that. Uh, and afterwards, uh, modifiers will or handlers will will be inv inv invoked, and those handlers will listen to the actual uh, uh, text that has been uh, set uh, via the operator, and then it will then say from okay, this object has changed, the uh, position of the object has changed, so I need to update the viewport tag. Viewport has uh, has to be updated. And oh yeah, the property panels also shows the uh, the position of the object. Tag the property panels has to has to be redrawn. After that, the view will be re redrawn. I'm going to go into a bit uh, deeper of, of 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 that, of course, because that's the whole part of the of this talk. Um, but I first want to show you from okay. This is actually the actual code inside Blender showing that main loop. It's there, it's described, uh, it, it, it's de de described. The comments are the same, it's just copy paste from the source code, so I didn't change anything. This is the main loop. It's really important for uh, new uh, developers to uh, perhaps not look at the main function, but look at this main function. Well, an editor has been tagged to be redrawn. Uh, at that point, um, editors, how are they structured? You have the 3D viewport. The 3D viewport has several uh, areas, which is the main area where the 3D scene is displayed. Then you have the top bar, you have some sidebar, a menu bar, and uh, those are called regions. And every and every region has its own draw function, which is a callback which will be called uh, when the area has been tagged. And inside that draw function, uh, UI components are being called and eventually UI, uh, uh, good, uh, the uh, GPU module is, is being called or the draw manager is being called. I'm going to uh, step in more detail of the last two two things. The UE components are uh, in this talk a bit out of scope. Uh, internally, they just uh, 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 call the GPU module immediate mode, but that part I will go into uh, later on. Just a step back. Uh, Creating a new uh, uh, space type, which is actually an editor, and 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 uh, I want to say from uh, show you from okay where uh, do the uh, callbacks of the draw functions uh, are created. 
Uh, this is also actual code. It's uh, nothing proprietary. And here we uh, defined the view 3D space type, which is the uh, view 3D editor. At front, we just defined we're going to create an editor. And at the end, we are going to re register that this is an, an editor. Just during uh, uh, when Blender starts, this, reg uh, this function is being called to register Okay, this is how the uh, 3D viewport works. The 3D viewport has multiple air, uh, regions and yeah, of course the main region, the main window region uh, is the, uh, the, the part where, 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 where the scene is shown and uh, that is also being created, set in that uh, data structure and uh, uh, and per region, you can set different callbacks. And for this talk, the draw callback is actually the one we are talking about. And inside that, uh, and inside that uh, draw uh, function, uh, you can use the GPU module to draw something. And what's the GPU module? Uh, the GPU module is a common way how to uh, to draw something uh, using the GPU, uh, but being uh, uh, independent on, of the actual platform it's running on. Like OpenGL, Kern uh, Blender has uh, uh, when 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 you run Blender, it starts and runs on OpenGL. So there's one backend. Uh, but in the near future, we will be having the metal backend and the Vulcan backend, and perhaps who, who, who knows a DirectX backend? You never know. Um, so the GPU module will, uh, if 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 you use that, it will automatically run on all those backends that we have uh, created. It is based on the core profile. Uh, for people who are not familiar, I'm going to dive deeper into the core profile uh, and it has a, c a compatibility layer for uh, older OpenGL uh, draw uh, calls. What's, what do we mean with core profile? With core profile we actually mean uh, it's a shader based uh, uh, approach of, of drawing uh, to your screen. So we're talking about a vertex shader or a fragment shader. If you, if you know the, the website Shader Toy, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you also from how, how uh, the immediate w uh, mode works, but that's uh, later on. Uh, the core profile has been introduced or stabilized in uh, OpenGL 3.3 uh, and uh, uh, to uh, uh, to deprecate uh, the core uh, the the, imme the immediate mode to deprecate it still exists because some software uh, uh, companies with with a lot of money said from no we are not going to uh, migrate to the new API games did want to to do it because it has a lot of performance benefits so we have now two standards. Inside the shader-based approach, uh, when you want to draw something on, uh, the, uh, on, the, on, on, on the screen, um, you have to select a render target. Your render target is uh, a frame buffer, it's, 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 it's also called that, uh, where the actual pixel will land. And you have a program, and program is, yeah, combination of several of uh, one vertex shader and a fragment shader I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying it of, 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 of course there's much more going go, going on linked as a single program which which does the operations that needs to be done uh, to uh, draw something to that uh, frame buffer it also needs some index buffer and vertex buffers geometry data 
and perhaps you want to render a texture or have some additional buffers like uh, weight painting buffers you want to draw as, 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 as a side, uh, you add that to uh, separate buffers and textures. But there are also some uh, parameters you can set and we call them, uh, they were called uh, uniforms or in, in uh, modern uh, Vulcan based languages it's, it's renamed to global uh, un uniforms due to some restrictions that Vulcan gets. And at the end you, uh, when, you, when you have uh, loaded the program, loaded all the buffers, attached them uh, to, together, you just say from okay draw. And based on that it will then draw what you have uh, pre prepared. It's a different programming model than in CPU where you can tweak or just do a step, then take back, load more data in, 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 uh, in, in, in between because you know now for sure that you need the data. In, in a shader based approach, you, you actually need to load all the data that you can do to perform the whole uh, uh, draw command. In such a draw co uh, co command, a lot of stages will uh, happen, uh, from vertex shader, triangle, assembly, vascularization. I'm going to do it from step by, by step to uh, show you what uh, they are. Let's first start with a vertex buffer. Here's a vertex buffer of the default cube. <laughs> But I also added some, uh, some color very, very, very variations to it to make it more exciting. Um, this is actually the data that uh, Blender then uh, uh, stores on the GPU. Then we have a vertex shader. And what does the vertex shader do? The vertex buffer that was uh, uploaded, it, uh, it uh, now, now uh, uh, with the in, uh, uh, we define that we want to read the uh, the position and the color from the vertex buffer. We also have an, a parameter, and that par 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 parameter is a transformation matrix. That is the world matrix, including the view transform and the camera transform, all together uh, in, inside a single uh, matrix. Then we can uh, multiply the matrix with the in position and store that in the GL position, which will be given to the rest of the uh, shader program. And we copy the in color to the out color so we pass that also along. So we now have eight dots on the screen, and we have the actual coordinates on the on the on the on the, on the screen, and the colors that we uh, uh, we also had in the input vertex bu uh, buffer. Then we get to the index buffer. And the index buffer that connects the, the, the vertices into actual geometry. Now a hidden step uh, happens. And actually it's, it's, it's the rasterization uh, step. And in the rasterization step, um, every tri 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 triangle prim uh, primitive of the previous step is uh, being split in hor horizontal lines. And for every horizontal screen line, uh, the leftmost pixel and color is determined and the rightmost pixel and uh, uh, color is determined. And then for each pixel in between of the leftmost and the rightmost, the fragment shader will be invoked. This is an example of the fragment shader. Okay, I'm getting a color, the position of the screen that's al already uh, there because the uh, fragment shader result is stored in that position, so we don't have to read it. We get us our color. We want to store it in the output color. 
and we just copy it. And by doing that, we got a beautiful colored cube. And this, all these steps that happen in a single draw command. But then, having multiple uh, GPU backends like Metal, Vulkan, Op 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 OpenGL, there are some uh, some uh, some differences. And those uh, one one of those differences is that the GLSL, like Vulkan, has a, G a, G G a GLSL, which is the shading language. OpenGL has a GLSL, calls the same shading la language, but they're not 100% compatible. The actual uh, code, the logic, that's quite the same. Uh, but there are, are difference in from, okay, how do you bind or you define the bindings to load uh, the data inside the, uh, uh, the shaders. Uh, for the, for that, uh, create info was uh, being cr uh, uh, we created create info. Create info is a data structure we have where we can define uh, those bindings and how the shader is uh, is 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 built up, so we can uh, uh, generate those uh, differences. How does such a create info look like? Well. Here's a uh, create info where we defined. Uh, uh, here we are uh, defining a create info with the name shader three D smooth color, where we say from okay from the vertex buffer we will read an in position and the in color. We also need a per parameter which is called push constants because we are moving towards a Vulkan based uh, 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 way of working where it's the global uniforms uh, or where we are going to use uh, push constants instead of uniforms. And for the source code, it's somewhere in a file called colorvert.glsl. The vertex shader will, st uh, will uh, uh, pass some data around to the next stage, to the, sh uh, to the fragment shader in, in, th in this case. We also defined uh, that, uh, but we create there an uh, interface uh, info for. In the interface info is then the container, the, the structure, the data structure, uh, containing the uh, uh, the attributes that will be passed from uh, from the vertex shader to the fragment shader, and then we have the definition of the fragment shader, where uh, okay this uh, source code, and uh, we are going to write to something that's called uh, the fragment color, the frag color. The last uh, line, do static com com compilation, is uh, that we also have a mechanism to, uh, to create uh, uh, inheritance of these uh, shaders. And that is something because uh, we are generating the actual GGGLSL code that from the definition we can uh, already use uh, uh, in a sort of inheritance uh, to reduce the uh, code duplication. Otherwise, you had to do this for a great example is the Workbench engine. The Workbench has uh, 100 shaders and actually it's only doing one thing. Uh, but as the parameters are different because you have the solid shading or the, uh, 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 or, uh, uh, the ict ray shading, uh, we just changed that per, per, per parameter and then uh, we can actually use uh, the rest of the definition. With the static com com compilation, we, we mark that shader as from, okay, this is actually a shader that we, we want to use and we want to co 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 compile. It contains all the data, and this is also a step from, okay, we can do validation on this. And this is then how you create a shader. 
just having that defi the definition, the, G, the GLSL, and when you want to use it, create a shader from a specific info, pass, uh, par uh, pass the name, and you will get that shader back. Because a lot of code is generated, this is the actual uh, shader that code that you actually need to write in the GLSL. All the binding information and the, and the stage information and the parameters, which is part of the create info, will be added automatically for you. Because we know which shader uh, is static, we can also do validation on, on, uh, on top of it. And with, vali with validation, we mean that from, okay, you're working on your G G GLSL and you're working on your system and your system has OpenGL uh, and you're working on uh, those, those, those shaders. If you, if you change uh, something, will it still work on Metal or will it still work on Vulkan? You want to validate that. Yeah, you can start Blender, OpenGL, then uh, check, uh, go, go to that functionality that uses that, uh, that shader, see if it crashes, or you can use uh, compile time uh, shader vali validation. This is a tool that, uh, that is inside Blender, uh, which you can enable in the, in the com compiler options, which during com compilation time will alre already compile those shaders and give you an error if something failed. Uh, since la last week, if you're on an Apple, it will also uh, do the Metal validation and the OpenGL uh, validation at the same time. And eventually, when we have Falcon, you could we will be using the Molten VK. So if you have an Apple uh, development station, it will run all uh, the all the validation of the three uh, uh, GPU backends uh, that we support. Immediate mode. A lot of, uh, like for 3D and for em em environments, such a, a shader-based approach is really nice to work with. But if you want to draw buttons or uh, 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 lines or what, what, whatever, simple UI co 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 components, it's, a hard, it, it, it's hard to, to set up because it is just uh, a lot of uh, changes you need to make in different places, and uh, yeah, that's that's not uh, really uh, helpful. Uh, so we made an um, an comp compatibility layer in the GPU module, which uh, uh, looks like uh, uh, the old uh, immediate mode, uh, but internally uses uh, 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 shaders uh, to actually draw that. So it use internally, it still uses the core profile, which we want to use. And how does that look like? Well, here, uh, norm, uh, here we uh, define uh, our, our vertex for format. So how does my, uh, the vertex I'm going to, to send to the GPU are structured? Uh, for, for this example, I'm only using a, a position that's uh, defined here. Then I'm going to uh, select a shader and Blender all for the user interface has a lot of built-in shaders which you can just use so you don't have to write them, them yourself. And, they, and, and uh, you can set some parameters there as, as well. And the uniform color per, per parameter of the old op, op, OpenGL immediate mode is directly transformed to a specific uh, uniform. Then you want to send some data, like I'm here I'm going to, uh, to uh, uh, draw a box, a, a, a rectangle, and, 
and I'm going to uh, to to say from I'm going to uh, uh, draw some lines, and those lines are connected, and these are the points uh, that I want to use. And when we are at uh, the last sentence, I am end, it will then create the vertex buffer that's needed, the index buffer that's needed, and try to uh, and and. Uh, 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 and, and send that to a buffer which will then do the actual drawing. Internally, it will, uh, multiple of those draw calls will be grouped together for performance reasons. For example, if you have a lot of uh, data that, that you want to um, there's always a con consideration to make from if you have a large, a, a large amount of data you want to use, uh, I would prefer or it, it's better to use the shader based approach because the immediate ma uh, based approach would upload uh, the vertex buffer or create the vertex buffer every time that you're uh, going to, up, uh, to draw something. And with the shader based approach you can cache that on the GPU. So, next topic, the draw manager. The draw manager was introduced in Blender 2.8 um, uh, with the ideas of, from, okay, we have Eevee coming, uh, and Eevee needs to, to be a real-time, high, high performance. We have the Workbench engine, which, uh, which was high, high performance, uh, best uh, performance speed for an animator. And we also had some uh, some other ad additional challenges as for example in Blender 2.70 series when you ha were in rendered mode and you could uh, go into edit mode and still move the vertices around but you couldn't see them. You couldn't see them because it was not part of the cycle's uh, uh, code base. And what, what uh, uh, we introduced was an overlay engine, and that overlay engine could render the, uh, all the edit mode stuff on top of any render engine that uh, you used. Grease Pencil came along. Currently, we are working on a viewport compositor that's all done inside the Draw Manager. And eventually we also uh, used the same technology in the image editor and to draw the backdrop of the uh, compositor. Uh, so we, uh, so, uh, to also for performance reasons, but also for correct uh, colorness. I'm not going too deep into from, okay, how does EV work and the workbench engine works, uh, uh, because that, I think I, we con can talk about that for ages and still not understanding it. And there is some person in the, in the room who understands it. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'm going over from, okay, how does su such a draw engine uh, uh, work on API level? So I'm going to uh, quickly go over a simple draw, draw engine that, uh, that I created, uh, going over uh, the inner stage, thinking stage, and the actual drawing stage. The init stage is uh, uh, when you're working in in, in, in shader-based approach. Uh, your shader uh, does not uh, doesn't have to uh, draw the final uh, pixel that's on the screen. You can use intermediate buffers, and every uh, uh, and those uh, intermediate steps that you that you you take we organize in passes and. Um, here I define two passes, a pre-pass and a shading pass. And this is typically done in, uh, in modern game, game engine to, uh, uh, where the shading is so, is so complex that you don't want to shade on, on every pixel that, that will be drawn, only on pixels that are visible in the screen. So you first do a pre-pass to select 
the pixels that you want uh, uh, that that are vis are visible, and then you do a shading pass or uh, a deferred pass uh, to actually do the calculation for from the for the lighting. It's this is still in development, but this uh, this, this is something uh, where uh, we want to move to, and that is that every draw, uh, uh, if 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 you want to draw something, uh, currently in Blender 3.3, .3, uh, everything is locked in a very, in, in in a global uh, uh, locking me mechanism. So only one thing can use the draw manager at a time, and we want to separate that. So every draw engine will get a reference to a draw manager. Uh, so we can have multiple draw manager at the same time uh, uh, running. If you look uh, in uh, Eevee, when you press F -F 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 12 for rendering, you have a status bar that, that goes up, uh, uh, but it doesn't go up when the image editor is visible. The reason for that is the image editor is also using the draw manager. But if you hide the image editor and every 3D viewport and every node editor, it will work. <laughs> and then we have some, uh, some, uh, some cache where, where we store the shader that we want to use. And then we want to sync the scene data that 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 we have uh, uh, to the render process that we create. The syncing process is syncing. It doesn't do the drawing uh, at 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 all. It is a way how to structure uh, the GPU calls. Uh, so the uh, the drawing per, per performance in the end will lead to less uh, context switches on the GPU which will then render faster than if you do it in order. We first get the, uh, the, 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 the current uh, draw manager and store that in the local uh, variable. We clear the, 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 the passes that we, uh, we have because that could still be filled with, uh, with data from the previous pass, uh, from the previous time that you draw. We get our shader and we set our shader. Inside the pass, uh, the actual command set the shader is being registered. It's not being executed, it's only being registered. We bind the texture, which is also only registered, not being uh, executed. Then, uh, how do you want to uh, apply your final pixel to the, uh, uh, to the render target that you're uh, uh, selecting? We want to write to the depth buffer, and only uh, when the depth is greater than the actual uh, uh, pixel depth. And we clear the, uh, the depth. We do the same for the uh, sim, sim, similar things for the for the for the shading pass, and then and then uh, the for each object in the scene, this function is being called, and during this uh, function, we first get the geometry of the, of that uh, uh, object. If it is a mesh, you will receive the geometry. If it is a light or a camera or an another object, you won't get any geometry because it doesn't have geometry. If it doesn't have geometry, you're finished. And uh, if, if, if it has, we are going to continue. Uh, there's a lot of performance improvements that we're currently working on uh, to reduce the number of draw calls. Uh, and, and we're going to uh, use some uh, uh, instance-based uh, uh, drawing uh, to, to uh, uh, draw multiple objects at the same time in a single uh, draw call. So in the, every object has its own transform matrix. So you want to store that some, uh, some, uh, somewhere. And we first select for, from, okay, in which index of a buffer will be then the, the transform matrix 
for that specific object. And then uh, in the pre-pass, we will uh, add that to geometry with that resource handle. And then finally, we're going to draw. Uh, we uh, select the current view, which contains some information about uh, how to render, how large is the screen, uh, that kind of information. And then we submit the, the pre-pass and then the shading pass. And uh, this way of working, uh, this is a really a, a simplistic uh, example. I try to, to, to use our basic engine, which is already much more complicated that I couldn't show, uh, but it gives you an, an overview how all those draw engines work. But then you have multiple draw engines that work at the same time on the screen. And how do we do that? And basically we have two uh, render targets that we can draw into. And one is a, uh, is, is, is a linear uh, buffer, which is being used by uh, all the uh, actual uh, draw engines, like Eevee, like Workbench, like Grease Pencils. They all draw in uh, scene linear space. And then the overlay will uh, render in, uh, in screen space, which is sRGB. And when copying the, those two images to the final frame uh, buffer that will be visible to the user, we apply the correct color management and uh, uh, apply them together and copy them to uh, the screen. So basically, Workbench could generate uh, uh, something, uh, some image like this. The overlay engine can do, create something like that, that. And eventually, this is what the user sees. So, <laughs> I'm going to uh, let's see how much time I have. I don't have that much time. I'm going to skip this one. <laughs> it was theoretically. I'm going to do a small demonstration about how we uh, debug uh, our, our code because it is a bit different than what uh, if, you, if you're not used to uh, doing actual GPU development. Um, for that, we uh, use a tool which, which is called RenderDoc. RenderDoc is an open source tool. Which you can, RenderDoc.org, you can find, you can download. Um, if it fails for, 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 for you, download the previous version. It's, 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 it's a common uh, from uh, in the, A, the AMD implementation is, is better, but the NVIDIA implementation can fail and then you just have to revert one version or two versions back and then it will work. When you start render doc, it sees like this. And yeah. You can point to your executable and you can say from, okay, I'm going to launch. And it starts launching Blender. And in the small, you will see some, uh, some text here. Uh, don't mention it. Uh, it says press F12 to capture, but F12 is also render, so it's a bit, nah. <laughs> What, what, what I normally use is, uh, is this, this frame, uh, this page that you, that, you, that you get. This is the uh, Blender process I'm, I'm working on and I can actually uh, capture a full frame and every co 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 command that will be uh, given to the GPU. And I can say from, okay, uh, capture a frame. And it captured the frame. The frames you're, you have been captured are here. And if you open this, uh, this frame, it looks really 
difficult to see what's happening. Uh, but if you use the minus minus debug GPU startup uh, parameter and you're l launching Blender, I'm not going to save this. Blender will now uh, add more metadata to the draw calls. It will generate names so you can see it. But it will also uh, ma mention from I'm now busy on this task and it can then group those commands together. I think it was this one. Yeah, it captured one. And now you see exactly during that frame what, what it did. The top bar was not changed, so there was no draw calls beneath it. The status bar was changed because the text changed. I rotated the, the, the camera. The actions uh, for some reason changed. Not sure why, but could be optimized perhaps. Uh, but uh, it's more about the uh, space at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, nothing changed. That's that's the point. The action editor changed because my mouse was over it, and the three D viewport did not change. Uh, so it doesn't uh, it didn't record any anything. Happens often, but you can also say from okay, record something in two seconds. So I capture something within two seconds I'm going here. I hope it captured something. It captured something. That's still the action. I'm going to, if that happens, I'm going to just to capture multiple frames And now you, you see that the uh, 3D space has been uh, uh, doing a lot of drawing. And you can actually see from, okay, what did the workbench do? And you see the different passes, random passes that the workbench did. And in the texture viewer, you will see something nice. It will, uh, the, uh, Pre-pass draws, uh, we don't clear texture if it is not needed. And for the, for the shading pass, we checked the depth buffer, which is only uh, used, uh, and, and only when the depth buffer is, uh, has a value, we will read from uh, the color buffer. So you see this, which is not a cube, but it is a rotated cube or, or in multiple frames. The same with the normal buffer. I forgot which buffer that was. Uh, the object ID buffer. And then we have the depth buffer. Let's see if I can. Wrong one. Ah, there, 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 there it is. So the depth buffer contains the data and that will then uh, be uh, read by the uh, shading uh, pass. And for, uh, for each uh, draw call, 
you can also go into all the different stages that 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 we had so the vertex shader what happens before what happens afterwards and see all the data it's more interesting to do that in the uh, uh, in this pass so we have a position in the, uh, in the definition of, of our normal buffers um, you can look into it but you can also uh, view it you can view the data when uh, uh, when uh, before the vertex buffer uh, vertex shader was applied and you can uh, view it when it was uh, executed so afterwards and in the fragment shader for example you can check you you can actually uh, see the whole fragment shader which is thousand lines of code uh, but the main function is uh, reasonable clear and um, actually you can change your code here compile it and run it This is actually what I want to uh, present uh, for today. Um, it's a lot of information. Uh, please look back on, on it on the, uh, on, uh, on the video stream. Uh, these are currently the projects we're working on. We're doing a lot of refactorings at the, at, at the moment. And if you want to join us, meet us at uh, the EV viewport module on Blender Chat. Thank you.